ES6 modules are the greatest thing that's come to JavaScript in a long time for keeping your code clean and maintainable. And today, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get started using them now. The main idea behind modules is allowing you to import and export different sections of code from different files into other files, which allows you to break apart your code into more smaller grained files, which makes your code easier to understand and reason with later on when you have to change it. So to start, I have a simple class called user that has a bunch of information about a user. It has a user class and two functions for printing the user's name and printing the user's age. Now, what we want to do is export the different information about the user so that we can use it inside of our main.js function right here, which is being imported inside of our index.html file, as you can see here. So if we go into our users file, there's two different types of exports we can use. There's a default export, and then there's a standard export. So what we want to do is export this class of user as the export default. And there's two different ways to export things. The first way is to define it at the end of your file here, for example. So we could say export default user, and this is going to export the user object as our default thing for our user.js file. And then we can also use the normal export down here. So we say export, and then inside of curly brackets, we put other things we want to export. So for example, we can export print name and we can export print age. And now this file is exporting this user class as well as these two functions. But the syntax is a little bit clunky for how to export things, and I prefer to export things in line. So for example, before we define our class, we can just put export default, if I can spell it properly, export default, and that'll actually defaultly export the user class without us needing to do it at the end of the file. And we can do the same thing for our functions. We just put normal export instead of export default, and there we go, everything in our file is being properly exported. You just need to remember that you can only default export one thing, so usually it's going to be the class that your file is defining if you are defining a class in your file. So now let's actually import these objects in our main.js. All we need to use is the import syntax, so we say import, and then we say the name of the default thing that we want to import, in our case it is user, and then we just say we want to import it from. So we can say from user.js, but when you're importing things in JavaScript, you need to make sure that you put in front of it a dot slash if you're wanting to use relative paths or just a single slash if you want to use an absolute path. So we're just going to use an absolute path in our case, either one would work. And if you save that, you'll notice we get a problem. And it says that we have uncaught syntax error, unexpected identifier, and it's saying that it doesn't know what import is, even though it should know what import is because import is part of the JavaScript syntax in the newer versions. But we need to tell our index.html that we're using modules. So in our script tag, we just need to put type equal module here. And now if you save that, we see our error goes away. And this tells our browser that we're using modules inside of this JavaScript file. And by defining the type of module, it also defaults our file to use the defer attribute for loading it. And if you don't know about defer and async attributes for loading, make sure to check out my JavaScript video on defer and async, which is going to be linked in the cards and the description below. So now that we have that working, let's actually use that user object that we imported. So we can just create a user. We can set it equal to a new user, and we can just pass it a name and an age, which are the only two parameters it needs. So let's say Bob is 11. And then just to make sure this is working, Let's just log out that user. And as you can see, we get a user, age of 11, and name of Bob. And we didn't actually define the user class inside this main file. We've defined it in this user.js file, which is not even being imported anywhere in our HTML, but it's being imported in our JavaScript, so we're able to actually use it. And the great thing is, if we don't want to call this user, let's say we just want to call it you, for example, we can just change the name in our import statement to be you, and then where we use user, just change it to you as well, and if you save that, it still works. We still get a user being printed out. This import allows us to change the name of the default imported objects. But let's say that we wanted to import our functions instead, or in addition to this class that we have for the default. So to import non-default things, what we need to do is we need to put them inside of curly brackets as we did when we exported them. So let's say we want to use, we want the print name function, and we want the print age function. So we just have to list the name of what we want to export or what we want to import. And it has to be the same name as what it's exported as in this case. If we wanted to change the name, we would need to follow it by as and then the name we want. So we can change this to be print username, for example. And now we can call the method using print username instead of print name. So let's do that. 
what's called print username, pass it our user object, and if you save that, it'll say user's name is 11, which as we both know is incorrect. So I just need to change this to be user.name instead of user.age. That's my fault. So now that's working properly, it says user's name is Bob. And it's using that print username function that we aliased it as up here using as. And then we can also use print age, give it the user, and you'll see user is 11 years old. And that's working exactly as we want it to. But if we don't want to import this default thing, for example, what we would do is we would just remove it completely and just put the other things we want to import inside of the brackets like this. And that'll work properly. But we don't actually have a user object to print out, so we don't really have a good way to test it. But just trust me on this. This is how you use the syntax to import things that don't have a default or if you don't actually want the default. And that's all there is to using imports and exports. They're not very well supported in modern browsers though. Only about 80% of browsers at the time of recording this, which is at the beginning of 2019, support import and export features. So what most people do is they use a tool such as Babel to convert their import and export statements and other modern JavaScript features into older JavaScript so that it can be used in browsers that don't support these newer features. Since this type module is not defined in older browsers, the older browsers will just completely ignore this script tag. So it won't even render it if your browser doesn't support modules. So there is another attribute you can use, which is called no module. And this no module attribute tells the modern browsers that support modules to completely ignore this script, but older browsers that don't know about modules will run this script. So it allows you to import different scripts based on if the browser supports modules or not. So for example, if we had another script that included all of this code from main.js and all the code from user.js into one file, we could import that in here using this no module attribute. And that would run in older browsers such as Internet Explorer 11 that don't support modules by default. My advice though would be to use something like Babel if you want to use modules because Babel makes using modules so much easier and it's so straightforward because it'll automatically do the conversions for you and you don't have to rewrite your code twice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on ES6 modules and learn how they can be used to break apart your code and make it easier to write and maintain in the future. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to check out my other videos on ES6 related topics linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.